think we're lost. Uh, no, dear. Uh, here's the sign now. Drive-in radio theater this way. drive-in radio theater. Oh. Uh, listen. It's Ruby's Drive-In Radio Theater. A coffee hot! In baseball today, the Akron Nightcrawlers defeated the Alpena ball bearings by a score of 6-1. to one. Second baseman Skitsy Cleaver set an all-time record for most putouts on natural surface by a wall-eyed infielder whose first name ends with the letter Y on days not ending with the letter Y. Ball bearings manager Rocky Buns had this to say about today's loss. It's a good ball club. Uh, I, I think if we can put it all together, we can turn this thing around. Welcome once again to Animal Magazine. Tonight, we'll be taking another look at the controversial Endangered Species Preservation Program pioneered by Dr. Heinz Fleischacker and his group from the University of Northern Central New Jersey. As you may recall, the Fleischacker group concluded that efforts to save shrinking animal habitats from the bulldozers of encroaching civilization might better be spent in teaching the animals how to survive in human society. Last week, we followed the adventures of some denizens at the Topeka Zoo who are taking part in a Fleischacker-inspired work furlough program, learning to be model urban citizens. Join us as we follow up on their progress. We're here in Berkeley, California at Edie's, one of the world's fine restaurants. We've secretly replaced the fine coffee they usually serve with Phil Boyd Studge. Will it be rich enough? Let's listen in to what the patrons are saying through our hidden microphones. As technology has advanced in America, it has increasingly encroached on one of those liberties, what I term the right of personal privacy. Modern information systems, data banks, credit records, mailing list abuses, electronic snooping, the collection of personal data for one purpose that may be used for another, all these have left millions of Americans deeply concerned by the privacy they cherish. There you have it, another unsolicited testimonial for Phil Boyd Studge, rich enough to be served in America's finest restaurants. <laughs> The two rhinos we interviewed last week got their start as parking valets in a downtown garage. Hey, that's my parking space. Hey, no, it isn't. I, I saw it first. On the fire. Hey, butt out. Hey, you butt out. I'm halfway in there. Somehow, that didn't seem to work out too well. 
I'm standing here on the floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, where the two rhinos have now been taken on as commodity traders for a major brokerage house, Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. The Merc, as it's known to insiders, is notorious as the second home to some of the pushiest people on the planet. The rhinos should fit right in. Let's see if we can pick them out of the crowd. Uh, uh, there they are! Fellas! Hi, fellas! Well, you're certainly looking colorful in those lime green and purple striped traders' jackets. I guess you want to make sure you're noticed in the bidding, huh? Uh, green and purple? Hey, we thought these jackets was gray and black. Yeah, you know, business stuff. Hey, we're, we're tasteful. Uh, we like subdued colors, uh, like black and, and, and gray. Uh, besides, they're the only colors we can see. Uh-huh. Well, are you ready for your first day on the trading floor? You bet. We're gonna make points. That's right. We're, we're gonna win on the spread. I see you've already learned the technical jargon. Uh, yeah. This is pretty sophisticated stuff, but we've been trained real good. Damn straight. We're gonna score, baby. Right to the top. Buy a these, how many? Uh, do you remember what we're uh, supposed to do? Yeah, sure. Uh, all, all we gotta do is... Well, let me explain it to you. Uh, we just... Uh, uh... Broccoli! Selling Nova Broccoli at 2-7. Broccoli! Is it gray broccoli or black broccoli? Hey, who cares? Hey, I'm hungry. Let's go get some. Well, huh, this is strange. Just about all the other traders seem to have left the floor. Oh, sir, uh, sir, uh, uh, let me help. Uh, mm, let uh, let me help you up here, sir. Uh, oh, oh, what just took place out there? It's astounding. I never would have believed it. Uh huh. And what exactly is those guys? In all my years in the commodities business, it's impossible what they did. What exactly did they do? Seventeen years I've been in this. Amazing. They said it couldn't be done. Cornered the market in frozen broccoli. Every last stock. It's theirs. It's illegal. You can't corner the market. But they did. Excuse me. I think I'm going to take up the religious life. Excuse me. Well, now that the rhinos have cornered the broccoli... Let's go over and find out what they plan to do with it. We got it all? I think so. There's nobody left. Okay, let's eat. Yeah, let's eat. I'm starved. Where's the broccoli? I think uh, I, I think I see him wheeling it in now. Hey, hey, you. You in the gray jacket. Hey, buddy. Where's our broccoli? Uh, if you'll forgive me, gentlemen, my vacation flight for Nassau leaves from O'Hare in just 20 minutes and I've got to... Ah! My colleague and I would just like to ask you a couple of questions. Yeah. Where's our broccoli? <sighs> uh, do I understand you to say you're expecting immediate delivery? Yeah. We want all the broccoli. Here. Now. You're in a great big wheelbarrow. Yeah. I should have thought you could comprehend that simple request. <sighs> But these are futures you bought here, gentlemen. That's November broccoli you've just cornered. It hasn't been planted yet. Not planted? <sighs> hey, what is this? I'm hungry. How can we eat it when it hasn't been planted? <sighs> well, gentlemen, it's like this. Here at the Merc, we buy and sell the ownership of tomorrow's crops. If the harvest is good, prices go down. If the harvest is bad, they go up. If we buy when there's a good yield expected and there's a sudden frost, we make the spread. 
Essentially, we're betting against the farmer. They sow and uh, we reap, as it were. For a few hours work a week, I'm talking boku bucks here, gentlemen. Serious speculative wealth. What's more, I I'd say that if you persist and can get your minds off food and out of cash, you could do rather well in this business. And now it's been fun, but I really must catch that. Ah! Wait a second. Please get off my butt. Please. What's all this about betting against the farmer? Ah! Farmers grow broccoli. I like farmers. Me too. They grow carrots and cabbage and peaches and trees, all sorts of stuff. Hey, that reminds me. I'm still hungry. I don't like this place. I, I want to break something. I concur with that. I definitely feel some breakage coming on. And let's go. And, and then let's find some lunch. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. See you next time. <laughs>
O oh, oysters, come and walk with us, the walrus did beseech. Mommy, mommy. I know someone's there because I can hear you. Who is this? It's fantastic. The entire spinal cord is missing. Hello. Hello. I know someone's there because I can hear you. Go on, say it. Do you have Prince Albert in a can? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? Thank you. Hello. This residence has been man-trapped by the Lethal Defense Corporation of Sweden. Please proceed no further without authorization from the resident. Obey. Comply. Docile. Tame. Servile. Submit. Resign yourself. Grin and bear it. Do what you're told. Under control. In baseball today, the Sulphur Springs bird feeders defeated the Dearborn turn signals by a score of 6 to 1. Third baseman Archie Walkenfuss set the all time record for most foul balls by an infielder with thumbs longer than four inches, hit after 11 p.m. on weeknights, all day Saturday and Sunday, and on certain holidays. The manager of the turn signals, the ever exuberant Goon Baumholtz, had this to say about today's loss. It's a good ball club. Uh, I, I think if we can put it all together, we can turn this thing around. Yellow-bellied sapsucker. Hello. This is Ralph Houck. This is the first of a series of phonograph records dealing with the stock market. Yellow-bellied sapsucker. Well, I can't see anybody buying an album such as this unless he wanted to make a buck. I'm glad you feel that way. There was a time when you and I were quite close. Red-eyed towhee. A pitcher has only one arm, so he must take care of it. Yes, Leslie, that always seemed odd to me, too. Veteran chart readers don't like to predict for sure that the movement will be any greater than the back of the triangle. In this case, two and a half points, down to 15. I've always admired your talent very much. The territorial calls are uh, for the purpose of, of keeping other male birds out of that particular section of the forest or field or whatever it is that this pair has set up and adopted for their own. The territorial call then is the song and really its function is to drive other males away. I really think you're a special person. I really mean that. Getting into the different positions in baseball. Let's take up catching first. Why? What happened? Why? What happened? The boys and girls who ask that question have never opened a book about either economics or business. There was a time when you and I were quite close. In this way, if he fumbles, he can make a faster retrieve. Sure, act like it's all my fault. Did you hear the oven bird then? 
Oh, that uh, loud teacher, teacher, teacher call. Yes, yes. It's one of the loudest calls, and it's interesting that it increases in volume as it, uh, if you listen to it carefully, you'll hear it start off very low, as a matter of fact, and then uh, get louder and louder and louder as it progresses through the call. But this is a fascinating bird. And yet, what is value in the stock? He is a man who has fast reflexes, knows their moves, watches their feet and arms, and methods of picking men off. As did my son, Lance. Luke's brother, Laurie's husband. Former husband. Olive sighted flycatcher. Are you at high tide or low tide or somewhere in between? Friend, I believe with all of my heart, it's time for that old shit, ship to come in. And you know that's a figure of speech because we know that we're going by air. I personally see no logic whatever in this, but a lot of people believe in it and thus it can come true. Hold on now, do I seriously mean to suggest that there is manipulation in today's stock market? <laughs> Brother of mine, I can't possibly prove it and I don't even intend to try. Yellow-bellied sapsucker. Hello, this is Ralph Houck. In conclusion, I would like to say baseball has been very good to me and my family. Hey there, Slim. Why don't you give us a tune on that there harmonica? What the hell kind of music is that? You've been hitting that shine again? Cleaning my rifle and dreaming of you. In baseball today, the great Ben dressing gowns defeated the Wapapello hood ornaments by a score of 6 to 1. In that game, catcher Wobbly Moon broke the league record for stolen bases against clubs with yellow-eyed left-handed right fielders batting less than 200 and platooning with an over-the-hill designated hitter during alternate leap years, a record that has stood since it was set by Hilo Puckett in 1824. Hood Ornaments manager Sparky Dickers had this to say about today's game. It's a good ball club. Uh, I, I think if we can put it all together, we can turn this thing around. Below the sleepy coastal hills, nestled within the heart of the Silicon Valley, there sprawls the Generico Contact Corporation. And as the world wakes in wonder, another day begins for this vast computer network, this great throbbing machine composed of countless men and women whose triumphs and heartbreaks, whose ceaseless endeavors break forth the chips of our lives. General Sidewinder, sir. And, uh... I am Siegfried, Government Services Administration. The General likes to call me his fiscal watchdog. The Secretary asked me to accompany General Sidewind on this trip. You must know that Milstar is coming under fire in Congress from certain, uh, elements. Oops. General, sir, the video you're about to see is the Joint Chief's new Milstar video project. Oops. No, Mr. Kissett. The General is talking about Milstar's critics in Congress. They're betraying the very AMSITs we're trying to defend. Defensing AMSITs? Defending Americans citizens. Well, General, sir, when Milstar comes online, those critics will be singing a different tune, sir. I'm afraid that's the problem. Milstar has been promised for so long, Congress is beginning to demand a semblance of progress. 
Demos, deadlines, milestones. Tombstones for all of them. We never should have opened the kimono and mill store. Set everything back. Did we request capital green light for the Sheboygan project? Well, did we? No, sir. Did we information Congress about Project Gene Splice? General, that's still classified. Precisely. And proceeding very nicely, our people in Biodef tell us. Have AMSITS voted against the protectionization Millstar alone can offer? Oh, Millstar. General, sir, the video. Maybe we should have a look at the great progress we're making. Video progress? Look, son, when do we go online? When are you dweebs gonna deliver hardware and let us go ballistic? We're very close, General, sir. Perhaps Mr. Siegfried could look over these contract revisions while I queue up the video. Verite, son. I want verite. I want to feel the heat of those lasers. I want to smell the burning. Soon, sir. Very soon. But in the meantime, just look at this fire control box. It's a prototype console adapted from Context Video Games Division. It's user-friendly, sir. Of course, computers will command the launch controls from the space shuttle in the real version, but every system needs a manual override. Getting the feel of it, General? <sighs> For today's demo, we've patched signals from the video into the fire control box. This button is your throw weight control. It toggles between X-ray laser mode and pop-up thermonuclear rocket mode. Aren't they cute, Siegfried? The trackball aligns the sights, and this red joystick in the middle with a button on top. Well, I guess I don't have to tell you what that's for, General. Enough briefing, son. Roll it. There's one more thing, sir. The video you're about to see is voice activated. In fact, it uses the same hardware and software that Millstar will, or rather is, incorporating. So you can press buttons and trackballs, or just aim and say fire. Now you're talking, Kisset. Wait till those glasnost simps in Congress see this. Generico Contact Corporation is proud to present an extraordinary experience in command and control. What you are about to see is no ordinary Death Star, gentlemen. Millstar does it all. Imagine, irradiation hardened zirconium mesh-covered military computer garrison the size of Capitol Hill, orbiting at 22,000 miles above terra firma. Launched via the space shuttle. Ah, uh, Egad, son. What's the problem with that video? Well, no soon, sir. I'm running a diagnostic on it right now. Uh, oh no. Well, sir, there's a bug in the voice-activated software. It's interpreting Mr. Siegfried's voice as a halt command. Gee, I could just delete those hackers in R&D some days. I'm sorry, sir, but these figures in the new contract... Stow it, Siegfried. If I hear another peep out of you... Let's try that again. Terra Firma. Launched via the space shuttle, Millstar is upgradable with first strike er, first rate homing interceptors to direct fire into any vector you want. And naturally, like all generical contact products, they're electromagnetic. Gee, that bug again. General, sir, I think that. Uh, Siegfried! I thought I told you to button up! Of course, this couldn't happen to the real Millstar, General, sir. Here we go. Like all generical contact products, they're electromagnetic pulse resistant. Millstar puts you in command, online to five ballistic missile fleets. Optional command and control communications features include laser fire control, remote railgun reloading, instant laser blinding, and pinpoint ethnic cleansing. Er, two trial intrusion. General, sir! What is it, Siegfried? You really need to see the cost of the revised Millstar contract. Two General, please, sir. Contact has raised the Millstar appropriation by 12 billion. It could mean a subcommittee. <laughs> Territorial intrusion prevention. Fix it! Mr. Kissit, is this a secure phone? Be our guest. General, sir, I've disabled the voice activation mode so you can use the fire control box for this next sequence. Now the fun begins. Here come those red rockets. Remember to try to hit the red rocket. Hello, is this the Secretary General's office? <laughs> Thanks. Yes, is the Secretary General free for dog hunting with General Sidewinder this weekend? <laughs> uh, my heart feels like an alligator. In baseball today, the Oil City Toenails defeated the Correctionville Semicolons by a score of 6-1. to one. In that game, center fielder Dick Ballboner set a new team record for most ground rule doubles against right-handed pitchers with Mohawks on alternate Wednesdays preceding day game losses east of the Mississippi. 
Toenails manager, the colorful Barbara Eupert, had this to say about today's game. It's a good ball club. Uh, I, I think if we can put it all together, we can turn this thing around. We're here in Berkeley, California at Edie's, one of the world's fine restaurants. We've secretly replaced the fine coffee they usually serve with Phil Boyd Studge. Will it be rich enough? Let's listen in to what the patrons are saying through our hidden microphones. Where do you start? Did you have one thing in your favor? You have that lovely, agile young body. Can't you tell I'm crazy about you? I find you a very exciting woman. I really want to believe that. I don't think I've ever had a dream this beautiful. I really think you mean that. Every day it's going to get better and better. But that's going to take time. Just mellow out a little bit. I'm not sure I understand. Do I detect a note of insecurity? I'd be a fool not to trust you. Your desire very often borders on desperation, Karen. There you have it, another unsolicited testimonial for Phil Boyd Studge, rich enough to be served in America's finest restaurants. We my baby just like money Too wild you hold her tight But if you let her go She'll blow like dough Honky tonk day and night Cause a friend of mine Came and wised me up But this is what he said Money goes from hand to hand And your baby goes from man to man Gary called again today. I answered the phone on the second ring, and a familiar voice with a thick Pakistani accent said, Hello, this is Gary from Microsoft Computer Technologies. I'm calling about some problems with your computer. Gary has been calling us for years now. More than once I've thought that, as soon as he identifies himself, I should shout down the hallway, Honey, pick up the phone! It's Gary! Then back to the phone. How are you, Gary? How's the family, the missus? Kids doing okay in school? It's quite possible that my computer does have problems. A nagging fear haunts me that Gary is right, that I am somehow doing irreversible electronic damage, Luddite that I am. And if I don't follow Gary's instructions in merely a few critical seconds, the whole apparatus will crash in a puff of smoke, alarm bells ringing and possibly sparks or even flames leaping out of the keyboard and the monitor. Gary's phone calls plug into my technological insecurity. His whole routine has more plausibility than, say, the email supposedly sent by a grandson after he has been mugged in a London hotel parking lot and needs money wired right away. Gary is more plausible, too, than the famous Nigerian prince who has a trust fund waiting for us both as soon as the bank receives payment of minor legal fees. Also, Gary is smart enough to know that threats and browbeating won't work with me. Pretending to be from the Internal Revenue Service, demanding immediate payment of non-existent back taxes, would only anger me, and soon we would be larynx deep in a shouting match. One such phone call actually ended with the caller thundering at me. Pay the money you owe us or you're going to jail. Then he added, almost as an afterthought, Have a nice day. I could get suckered into Gary's routine, except for his name. With that wonderful accent, I expect a name like Sanjay or Gupta or Radhamathnan. But Gary? I envision Gary in a small, drab cubicle with a metal desk and chair. Overhead, a fluorescent light buzzes and flickers. He has a thermos of lukewarm tea. Also on the desk is a daily printout of names and phone numbers. A poster intended to inspire is thumbtacked to the wall. The image is of an eagle in flight. And at the bottom is the word, soar. One thumbtack has popped off, and the corner is curling down. Gary's phone calls, frequent though they may be, always take me by surprise. Once I managed to stammer, I can't believe you're still calling me. He replied cunningly, And I cannot believe that you would not take better care of your computer. Oh yeah, he's good. 
Today, though, I was ready for him. Hello, this is Gary from Microsoft Computer Technologies. I am calling about some problems with your computer. I was barely able to contain my excitement. Carefully and clearly, I said, Gary, are you ready to accept Jesus as your personal Savior? Silence. Gary, right now, are you ready to... I heard a click, then a dial tone. Then a woman's recorded voice said, If you would like to make a call, please hang up, then dial again. If you need help, dial the operator. Gary will probably call back sometime. He's persistent. But somehow, I now feel that I've got the upper hand. After all, God's on my side. And maybe I can get Jesus to fix my computer. In the latter half of the 18th century, Beethoven was charged with the ruination of the form he had inherited from Haydn and Mozart. During the mid-19th century, Richard Wagner wrote scathing articles bombasting the decadence of modern opera and the Philistines writing music. By the turn of the century, this was all now considered classical music, and jazz was proclaimed as a bastardization of the musical art. Rudy Valley recently said that most all present-day songwriters were amateurs. It would seem logical to conclude then that art which is considered decadent in one age might be considered classical in another. But let's examine the question of degenerate art. Given a progressive pattern of qualitatively decreasing art, there must be at some point a bottom level of void endeavor a stage beyond which no further degeneration can take place. The ultimate absurdity in musical composition would be the repeating of a single note or chord in the same rhythmic pattern throughout the entire piece. Precisely how far are we from just that? Coming up next, the chipmunks sing Milton Babbitt. Little of intrinsic value, approximately class D minus on Richter's scale of cultures. Ruby's Drive In Radio Theater was written by Adam Cornford. Terry Hawkins, Michael Pepe, Melinda Gebby, and Janice Lieber. <laughs>